Is there anything wrong with a remote antenna tuner at the antenna feed point? No. You get a perfect match between the transmitter and the tuner. The only loss will be the characteristic loss of your coax cable. No additional loss caused by SWR. But remote antenna tuners are expensive. They sit out in the weather and rot, and you often have to supply them with power to operate. Now, if you don't mind all that, fine. But a desktop antenna tuner is a lot less expensive and accomplishes the same thing as an expensive remote tuner. Yes, you will have standing waves on the coax, but the amount of signal loss due to SWR has been greatly exaggerated. The invention of coax has led to all these myths about SWR, transmission lines and antennas. You must have an SWR of one-to-one -one reflected power on a line with standing waves is lost. A resident antenna works better than a non-resident antenna. All myths, which have been addressed in much greater detail in other videos on this channel. Can't take them all on now. There are just too many of them. And I found that if you just use Google, do a Google search, you can find out these myths are just myths. Now, back before coax, hams used ladder line which is a very low loss, and you can have an SWR of 10 or even 20 to 1 without any significant power or signal loss. Now, coax works just like ladder line, except it has more loss and is unbalanced. Now, concerning the desktop antenna tuner, we typically hear all it does is make the transmitter happy. I'm guilty of saying it too. Well, it does make the transmitter happy by supplying it with an SWR of one-to-one. -one. That way, the transmitter delivers its full power into the transmission line. And since the transmitter sees an SWR of one-to-one, -one, that means it sees no reflected power. Proof that a properly adjusted tuner reflects all reflected power back to the antenna where it's eventually radiated. There's no place else for it to go. The idea that reflected power is all turned into heat in the line or the tuner is yet another myth. Now let's examine how much you really lose because of standing waves in the HF bands with low loss coax. It's easy to look up. The ARRL antenna book and other sources have graphs that show how much additional power is lost because of SWR. I like using this uh, online uh, types of coax cable and line loss calculator. All different types of, of coax here you can, you can select. So let's select RG8, typical ham radio, good quality coax cable, line length 100 feet, and let's start with the 80 meter band. 3.5 megahertz. Now let's select an SWR that many hams, if this was their SWR, they would absolutely faint. Uh, six to one. And we're going to do that on every band. Six to one SWR. Horrors. And we're going to use our 100 watt transceiver. So let's calculate now. So we have match loss, SWR loss, total loss, 0.9 dB. Less than one dB. Now keep in mind, how many decibels is an S unit? 6 dB, one S unit. If you go from S5 to S6, perhaps the operator on the other end could hear the difference, maybe. So really, no significant loss here on 80 meters, even with an SWR of 6 to 1 using RG8 coax cable. Now let's go up the band to 40 meters, calculate. Well, now we're just slightly over 1 dB, so still no big deal there with an SWR of 6 to 1. 
All right, 14, or rather uh, 20 meters, uh, 14 megahertz. SWR, SWR 6 to 1. Total loss, 1.7, just under 2 dB, so that is less than one half of an S unit in loss. Again, nothing that the operator on the other end is going to perceive. Let's go to 15 meters now, 21 megahertz, just over 2 dB, slightly over 2 dB uh, compared to uh, 20 meters. Again, nothing significant, less than one half of an S unit. Now let's go all the way up to the top of the HF band to 10 meters. And we have a total loss of, again, just over 2 dB, less than one half of an S unit. Now we can look down here. Oh, oh no, uh, we're only putting out 58 watts. That's, uh, I'm losing close to half my power. That's true, but it's, <laughs> it's less than one half of an S unit in loss. So uh, maybe we need to stop looking at how much power we're losing in our transmission line and instead look at uh, how much signal loss we have in terms of what the other operator is hearing. So since the additional loss caused by standing waves when the tuner is at the transmitter is really insignificant, what's the purpose of a remote antenna tuner? The only purpose I can see is to make money for vendors of expensive remote antenna tuners. Uh, they're a rather recent invention. How did we ever survive without them? Now here's where I can see using one. There's a guy who posted a comment on this channel who only operates HF Mobile. He has a pickup truck with a full-size CB whip antenna which is connected to a remote tuner in the bed of the truck where he has plenty of room for one. He works DX all over the world from 160 to 10 meters. Or you could buy a relatively inexpensive desktop auto tuner and put it under a seat with a short run of coax to the antenna. I would think that would work just as well. And you know, I would think that setup would work at least as well as a screwdriver antenna. I mean, a full-size CB whip is what? About 100 bucks, and it's over 8 feet long. That's closer to a quarter wave than a screwdriver type. And you don't have to depend on a motor tuning your antenna. Well, maybe there are other situations, like a boat, that merit a remote tuner, but I can't think of any. Maybe you can. Looking forward to your comments down below. Thanks for watching this video. Consider subscribing in 73.